Hello and welcome to Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at the sick as fuck chopping up dead motherfuckers horror movie called Pathology. Pathology is a little obscure kind of horror, thriller, whatever movie from 2008. It's actually written and produced by the two guys, Neville Dean and Taylor, who made the Crank films and Gamer and Ghost Rider Part 2. But they didn't direct this one. They gave it off to their buddy to direct, so he took a hold of shit. But they're very much on board with their sick sense of humor and shit like that. The story starts off with Milo Ventimiglia graduating Harvard or some shit, fucking top doctor, whatever. He's going to be a fucking, you know, pathologist. I don't know, pathologist, doctor, pathology, I don't know what they, basically it's fuckers who cut up dead fuckers, that's basically the whole point of the movie. So he goes, and he goes to a major city, I thought it was LA, but I couldn't tell, they wouldn't say what fucking city it was, just everything was, you know, generically labeled metropolitan, this and that, so whatever. He goes to a fucking generic city, goes to a hospital, goes down to the morgue, start his residency. Well, this is a particular big fucking, you know, morgue, man. They got like a whole giant room with like 30, 40 fucking doctors, all young doctors doing their residencies and shit. And they got fucking dead fuckers sprawled out. They got like almost like a haircutting salon, but even bigger, man. They got table after table, and you just go in there, man, and the next thing you know, they're just 20 fuckers getting chopped up. And not even all with like little surgical tools and shit. When they pop the rib cages, they just use fucking weed whacker trimmers and shit. I mean, this shit is fucking gory right off the bat, man. Like, the first ten minutes, this shit is just getting gory and nasty and sick and twisted. Like, a lot of movies, yeah, they show the autopsy. Oh, cut it open, blood, take out the heart. Well, they do that, but they even go a step further. During one of the fucking autopsies, some, I don't know, dumb green motherfucker... He makes the wrong decision, actually cuts a bowel open, fucking feces starts spraying out all over everybody, the motherfucker starts puking all over the corpse, all kinds of gross shit in this movie. So Milo Ventimiglia playing Dr. Gray, he gets there, he gets introduced to everybody, there's a couple kind of hot, kind of skeezy, I don't know, skanky chicks around, a couple kind of metrosexual looking dudes, next thing you know, you know, everybody's hanging out in this big ass clique and they're being mean, oh you're the new guy, we heard about you, you were coming into school, shit, fucking, you know, you graduated top of Harvard, but you ain't shit, motherfucker, we cut up dead bodies every day fuck you it gets to a real ridiculous point how they hate him and shit like there's one guy that's always knocking into him and fucking punching him in the back and shit when he's walking by like this really comes off as some high school bullying shit i don't know i don't know why they went so you know over the top but next thing you know he's like why well, no pussy you know i can do whatever you fuckers do so they invite him out to come drinking with them and shit, and he's kind of sitting there, and they're all asking, probing, asking questions, what do you think about dark shit, what do you think about killing motherfuckers, you know, what if, what if killing motherfuckers, all this shit, so, you know, finally they're like, well, we got some shit to do, and I'll fuck you, so they invite him out to drink, and they basically fuck off, he's like, wow, that was rude, but the main guy played by Michael Weston says, hey, man, you know, these guys are assholes, but you and me, we'll hang out tomorrow night, we'll go drink it, so they go drinking and shit, next thing you know, they're in a real seedy part of town, knocking on the door, fucking big, Big, huge, like six foot five, three hundred pound black dude comes out. He wants some money, so they pay some money, go inside. They're all drunk and shit. You don't know what's going to happen. You're like, where are they? At a nightclub? Or they? No, they're just at a dirty ass fucking apartment building and shit. They walk in, there's like a little baby in a crib smiling, laughing at him and shit. Next thing you know, they go in this room, there's like a 65 year old woman, toothless crackhead bitch, fuck titty sagging down their ankles and shit. And this fucking young doctor guy starts tripping off his clothes. Oh, yeah, I'm going to fuck it. And then Mila Vinamil was like, what the fuck? What did I get myself into, man? This is so gross. So he's watching this fucker strip down. And this fucking toothless lady's all on the bed smiling. Uh, fucking, you know, getting ready to get fucked by this guy. So Mila Vinamil, he's like, fuck this, man. He tries to get out of there. He starts passing out. He pukes all over himself. Cut to the next day at the morgue. Whoa, oh, man, fucking hungover, crazy shit. All right, here's the case of the day. We're going to autopsy this fucker class. Peel back the sheet. Who is it? It's the big fucking buff ass black guy. Let him into the apartment building and shit. And Mila Vendemir is like, holy fuck, man. Like, we were the last people to see this guy alive. So there's some shit going on. So he does a little autopsy. He figures out how this guy really died. He confronts this other fucking doctor. Says, listen, man, I know you killed that motherfucker and shit like that. And the guy's like, so what if I did? What are you going to do about it? What are you going to tell about shit? Now, at this point in the story... Milo Vendemila, he really should've just got the fuck out of here. Man, like, he should've known there's some homicides and shit, but what does he do? He gets intrigued, man. He wants to hang out with the group some more. There's a redhead girl who he just wants to fuck. And, and never mind that he's engaged to Alyssa Milano, who's like barely in this movie, but that's his fiance or whatever. So, you know, he goes crazy. He hangs out with these fuckers. 
Next thing you know, he gets introduced to the little game they're playing. What's the game they're playing? Well, some sick ass shit where they actually go out and murder people. One of the group murders somebody, then they do the fucking autopsy, and it's up to the other people in the group to figure out how did he get murdered. Was it a lot of poison and bullshit? Gunshot to the head, not as too obvious. He really killed him this way. Crazy shit. Milo Ventimiglia's head spinning, but you know, he's loving this fucking crazy pussy. He's banging, he's loving being part of this group of sick fuckers. I don't know why, and I didn't really like, I don't know. I didn't really get this, but these fuckers, they always talk about playing God and life and death and all this shit, and like, man, all you're doing is killing people, cutting up some death, stinking rotten motherfuckers. I really don't get where the God complex comes to play, but these motherfuckers going crazy and shit. So Milo gets into it step by step. Next thing you know, he's killing fuckers, but they kind of lie to him and say, oh, we only kill bad people, man. Don't sweat it. This guy was a rapist. This guy was, but we kill him. So he gets involved. He starts killing people and shit, and then finds out, wait, they're not really like all these vigilante killings and shit. They're really just from regular lower class people that these richy rich doctor fucks think they can just murder and get away with. Mila Vendamila goes from being fucking top of his class, promising on Dodger to all of a sudden, man, he's smoking crack and shit. His life's going down to shitter. Well, his fiance, Alyssa Milano, comes into the movie finally and says, hey, I'm, I'm going to go live with you. You know, we're going to get all this straightened out. We're going to get you back on track. You know, she she doesn't really know what's going on, of course, but she has the idea that this motherfucker's getting too wild up to some bad shit. So when she comes in, he's like, I got to get out of this, man. He sucks trying to fuck the crazy redhead girl. He stops hanging out with these murderous son of bitches. He feels all remorseful and shit because he started to wake up out of fucking crack and booze haze that he was in for months. So he's like, I got my, you know, fiance here. I'm going to settle down. But of course, they won't let him out of the game that easy. Start fucking with them shit. Next thing you know, the group starts turning on each other. Fuckers start going crazy. The main fucking head of the little gang and shit, he goes crazy. Fucking spree kills about three or four <laughs> fucking hookers and shit. You know, and like, Basically, there's no way out of this but death, so I won't go into, you know, the whatever, but, it, you know, fucking fight or flight type of thing, man. Mila venomino has got to do something in order to survive before all this shit comes out and he's involved in implicating all these crimes and shit, so I won't ruin how it all gets wrapped up, but it's, you know, it's a very sick, fucking dark, twisted movie. It's pretty good fucking interesting plot just watching this young wet behind the ears, whatever, you know what I mean, young promising doctor just go down the fucking drain on some drugs and some murders and shit. So as a movie, being a dark, sick, psychological, autopsies out the ass, murders out the ass, beast fucking, sport fucking, grainy fucking, whatever, every kind of perversion is justified in the movie pathology. I'll give it credit for going out of limb, trying to be as sick as possible. I'm going to give pathology a six and a half out of ten. Now on the picture and sound, this being a DVD from 2008 of a low budget movie, whatever. It's really not fucking all that great. And the reason is the way they shot the movie, they kind of shot it like all gray and dark and blue and I don't know, yellowish and shit. And that never really looks that good even on Blu-ray. But especially when you dump that down to DVD, man. Something about all them grainy little fucking grimy colors. They just don't come through on DVD. 5.1 surround sound. It was actually pretty good. I hear a lot of background sounds, even in the, like the off-top scene. Just like little sound effects, like people jangling keys and shit in their pocket. So picture and sound, unfortunately, it suffered from the dump down to DVD, getting kind of blurry, getting kind of grimy, you know, not really fucking looking that sharp and clear. Sorry, but picture and sound, I can only give the movie 6 out of 10. All right, on the special features, they actually really tried. You could tell the people behind the movie, even this was a small movie, they was really into it. You got the director commentary with the director, plus with the writers and producers, Neville Dean and Taylor. So, you know, it's kind of like a, I don't know, lighthearted, fucking grab-ass type of commentary where they're just joking around and shit. But they talk about the movie and how it got made and everything. There's a little 15 minute behind the scenes featurette and shit where they really go into like, you know, the preparation that the actors went to. They show them actually going to the real morgue. They went to the real morgue, man. Some people were grossed out. Some people puking in the hallway and shit. But some other people were really into it and got fascinated by it and shit. They also throw on an eight minute interview with the real pathologist. And I mean, what do you want to say, man? This guy tells you everything you ever want to know about chopping up dead fuckers. Then to round it out, they got a music video for some, I don't know, whack-ass rapper I never heard of. It's mostly just clips from the movie, but it shows all the best parts of the movie. So don't watch the music video before you watch the movie because it will really ruin shit for you. Then they have an extended scene of an autopsy of an important character. I'm not going to say who it was, the ruin or whatever, but it's an extended autopsy scene. You can tell that when they made this movie, that they was inspired a little bit by the Nacho Cerda fucking autopsy movie and shit. You know, they, like the way the scenes are filmed are cutting bodies open. You can tell they was somewhat influenced by that shit. But the thing that's whack about the extended autopsy scene, man, is it's like some little, not, it's just some little letterbox tiny shit 
with time codes and shit. It looks like shit off of VHS. Sorry, man, but that kind of ruined the special feature and shit. And then to round it all off, they got a trailer for Alien vs. Predator Part 2. I don't fucking know why the, no, nobody was involved in that shit, but you, just all the special features all for this movie, all said, oh, Alien vs. Predator 2. And it's a whack-ass trailer because it's it's some letterbox tiny fucking shit. It's not widescreen, it's not American. It's going to look fucking bullshit on your HD TV. So whatever, try and promote some shit. But if you're going to promote it, put the trailer in on some big widescreen quality, make it look good, but now they fucked up. So for the special features, you know, being kind of like low budget, throwing together special features. But so, I admit, being so entertaining, you know, showing that these actors really got into the mindset of wanting to see some fuckers get chopped up, want to see some fucking inside, some bowels and shit, whatever. Special features, it was actually pretty fucking impressive. I'm going to go ahead and give them 7 out of 10. Alright, so that's it for Pathology Man. You know, the movie didn't really really reinvent the wheel, so I didn't give it a real high score. But don't get me wrong, it's not bad. This is just a good movie to sit down. At the end of the night, when you're finishing off your fucking case of beer, you got about three beers left. Pop this shit in. Make sure nobody else around. If you get a little turned on by seeing these corpses get all cut up and shit, and then people fucking on the little cadaver tables and shit, whatever, man. I ain't gonna say nothing. Fucking jerk off. I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm, my lips are sealed, motherfucker.